there friends welcome back to my channel planty princess 92 my name is Ashley and today I figured we'd do something a little bit different I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel called spilling the soil so this series will consist of a genus of a plant um, specifically this genus I'm going to start with will be Hoyas and I will feature a variety of that species in the episode so today's episode is going to be the Hoya Obscura. This is the Hoya Obscura Major, which is a type of cultivar of this particular Hoya. This cultivar has elongated leaves. Um, and I believe actually this cultivar, they're more elongated than the normal Obscura would be, but they're all very veiny and they get a very deep, rich red color when given enough light. So the Hoya Obscura is from the Philippines and it's actually a semi-epiphytic plant in the wild, which means it can be grown on another plant, like a tree of some sort, or it can also be grown in soil. Obviously it is well adjustable to be grown in a pot because that's how we, as plant hobbyists grow them indoors but in nature they do grow semi-epiphytic it's also a very prolific grower it flowers very readily if given the right conditions the flower of this plant is like a light salmon pink color with a yellow inside to it it's very very beautiful these flowers tend to be very fluorescent but its smell is described as a different type of smell so its smell has been described as a light scent of lavender with a little lemon acidic -y scent to it so if i'm if i'm imagining or trying to smell what that smells like i would say it's definitely a sweet scented smell but again very different with the mixture of that lemon and lavender kind of combined together. This plant doesn't twine as most Hoyas do or as in an abundance of the Hoyas do. So rather than its stalks kind of like twining and twirling around like a trellis um, or a nature a tree or another plant, this one tends to be more stiff, more sturdy and it's great for hanging baskets for that purpose because it, it's sturdy enough that it will hold its weight, which is a really nice, beautiful thing, especially for a Hoya that has medium sized leaves. They're nicely elongated, so they really do look beautiful in a flowing basket, just kind of cascading over the sides. Mine has just started to kind of give me some new leaves. Um, not some new leaves, cause it has given me a couple new leaves. It's given me three. This one here, and they've all been pretty elongated. This one here and this one over here. But it has just kind of started to tendril. So its tendril has just started to kind of get a little bit longer. So I'm really excited for it to kind of just have a little growth spurt and grow upwards. It's also starting to get a little bit of sun stressing. I don't know if you'll be able to see it with this light, but especially on this leaf here, it is starting to get a hint of red to it. It's very subtle, so you won't be able to see it on camera, unfortunately. But if I do continue to give it enough light, these leaves will be very, very deep red with the veins running through the leaves, um, pretty much in this green color. So it's a very nice contrast as well. This Hoya is very easy to take care of. It's definitely a beginner Hoya, which is nice because it's a little bit more on the uncommon side, not in the sense of it's not common to find because it is very accessible and easy to come across, but it's not as common as say your Carnosa or your Puba Calyx. So that's really great that it's an easy grower for beginners. This plant doesn't run too expensive either, so it's perfect for a beginner gardener who wants to kind of get into Hoyas and learn how to grow them. They can handle a lot of light, especially this type of Hoya because it does have those thicker leaves and does look very beautiful sun stressed. So you can give it a lot of bright, direct light. You just wanna make sure that it's not right on top of the leaves. So if you're giving it 
bright direct light, especially from a grow light, you want to make sure that it's above your plant a little bit and not hover right over. So that way your sun stress kind of comes evenly throughout the leaves and doesn't get those burn spots on the leaves. I am growing mine semi-hydroponically, so I really don't have any watering needs for this plant. I just keep the reservoir filled one third of the way of the pot and I make sure I provide it the semi-hydroponic nutrients that it needs. But if you are growing this one in soil, you definitely want to make sure that you water it only when it's thirsty. I would definitely let this dry out pretty much 100%. An easy way to tell when a thicker leaf plant needs water, especially Hoyas, is the leaves are really firm. So if you kind of like go like this, when it's well watered, you'll be able to tell it's a little stiffer. And when it needs water, it will definitely be a little more flimsy. That's how I tell when my Hoyas or other plants in soil that are thicker leaf need water and it has worked very well for me. So the humidity for most Hoyas, um, at least all the Hoyas I have, they definitely like that higher humidity, that warmer temperature. It does make them grow a little faster. They don't need it to survive, but they definitely need it to thrive. So I have this one kept in my small grow tent. It is growing with pretty much all artificial lighting and it is in about 80 to 90% humidity. I do tend to open those doors a little bit because unlike my Vivo Sun Grow tent, it does not have space for a filter to kind of filter out that extra humidity. So I do tend to open those doors and then that tends to lower the humidity. But um, as quick as it goes down, it does go back up. I leave it open maybe for a night or so just to kind of circulate that fresh air. And I do have a fan in there to blow all that extra out because letting that uh, humidity kind of settle on the leaves will then create mold and you definitely don't want that on your plant. So that's pretty much all I have for this beautiful stunning Hoya. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and will continue to watch this series. I'm going to continue on with Hoya for the rest of this month for this series and then I think maybe I'll switch it up. We'll see. So thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in the content I provide. And as always, every plant's a princess. Bye.